What's up, five fans? Thank you once again for coming through. Much appreciate. I've got a fan above my head, um, as per usual. Uh, apologies, it's boiling hot here, so if the noise quality isn't great, I do apologize in advance. Remember, hit that subscribe button if you're new to the channel. Right, let's talk Kel Brook. Special K, is he still special? I guess that's to be proven. We're not sure, right? After a couple of big, big, big losses uh, on your record, um, Prosser talks about struggling to make weight and the weight cut, how that's affected you. He's outside life. So his life outside the ring, we, we kind of hear rumors of that as well. So we're not sure. We're not sure. Um, but one thing we do know is that he's back March the 4th. He'll think he'll fight in Sheffield. I'm not quite sure if he's headlining. I guess he is. And he'll come back 154 pounds. So let's delve into it. Um, some people said after the Spence loss that he should have retired. Um, I'm not one of those people. Um, if I had said that, then it's a mistake. I clearly don't think Kelbro should have retired. Look, you just got beat by GGG. Um, which was a tough fight, always going to be tough. You jumped up from 147 to 160. Um, you're unbeaten. So there's a couple of things. You're unbeaten. You took on then, maybe not now so much with GGG, but then you took on the glorified boogie monster. GGG was a monster. No one, I don't care, all the 160 guys are screaming out for GGG. No one at 160 wanted to fight GGG. Canelo said no for a belt away. Miguel Cotto kind of laughed in the ring when asked about it. Denny Jacobs refused. Um, Chris Eubank lost his pen. Uh, we remember the contract negotiations seemed to have stalled immediately. And um, Billy Joe Saunders had no interest. So here we are, 147 champ, undefeated at the time. He said, you know what, I can't get the fights I want. I wanted Amir Khan, I wanted Danny Garcia. Um, I wanted Furman, couldn't get those fights. My name wasn't mentioned with Maver or Pacquiao, so you know what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take on the boogeyman because I need the payday, right? Boxing's what feeds my fucking family. I need the payday and I'm not afraid. And he got beat. And not only did he get beat, he broke his orbital bone and the fight was waved off by his corner. So that affects you mentally. That affects you mentally. What you're supposed to do after a fight like that is A, take maybe a year out. I, I think so. Rehabilitate. Look at your options. Look at what makes sense to you. Not just financial, what makes sense to you physically and go again. And for me, that, that could be an easy 10 rounder an easy eight round, I don't care if you're IBF champion, just go get back into it slow. As they say, get your feet wet again. What you don't do is take on the 147 boogie man, which is Spence, right? You don't do that. Um, you don't go from 160, which he looked fantastic at physically. I looked at his body at the weigh-in for GGG and I was like, where on earth is there another 13 pounds to get rid of? I couldn't, I could for the life of me not see another 13 pounds. So you jump them from 160 down to 147, you take on Spence, which is always going to be a difficult fight regardless, even if you hadn't lost to GGG, Spence, in most people's eyes, was favourite to beat you. And those are your back-to-back -back losses. You don't retire on that. You don't retire on that, as far as I'm concerned. You don't retire on GGG and Spence. Most people have those people in the top 10 pound for pound list. You don't retire on that. Um, what you do do is take a long time out to figure out what's going on. Um, speak to your manager, your promoter, more your manager, sorry, more your family, if I'm honest with you, more your trainer, and then decide what's going to happen next. Because right now, what's Brooke, 31, I think? Right now, I think you start looking at financials. And what I mean by that is you start looking at the fights that make more sense financially. Almost what all the guys, when they come to later in their career, do. You look for the big paydays. You almost look for the easiest fight, bigger paydays. You don't do the bravado thing of taking the toughest fights because you're a tough man. You look for the easiest fight. That's what you do. Um, and I have no shame in him doing that. Two broken orbital bones. Most people would retire from that. So the fact he's continuing fighting says a lot. The problem is he's fighting 154 pounds now. Um, Book was always a big 147, but the guys at 154 are not just big, but they're skillful. Charlo, skillful. Lara, skillful. Hearn, big. He's lucky that Andrade's gone to 160, and obviously the other child has gone to 160 as well. But there still are good fights there. Potentially, could he win another title at 154? Absolutely. I mean, look at the other weekend. Saddam Ali beat Cotto, and Saddam Ali's got a title. I think, I think people might call me mad, but I think Brooke could beat Saddam Ali, or it could be a competitive fight. I really do believe that. So there are ways to get title shots. But I don't know if that's what we're trying to do right now with Brooke. Um, Eddie Hearn could easily map out a plan and say okay we're going to go for that title because that's the easiest title but then i don't know if that's what brooke wants i think brooke wants the money fights there isn't many money fights at 154 canelo's gone lara's not a money fight um 
and Khan at 154 could make sense. I think both of them struggle at 147 now. Um, there's Liam Smith in the UK. Is that a money fight? I'm not sure. Will Eddie Hearn work with Frank Warren to make that fight happen? Probably not. So it's not easy. But regardless, he is back. Um, I am happy he's back. I do think there is a couple more years at least left in Cobra, which probably equates to about five or six fights, maybe. Um, but I do think it's a case of matching him carefully now. Um, I do think it's a case of don't go thinking you're the big man at 154 because you're not. There are lots of good fighters at 154, even fighters that we don't know, even fighters whose names maybe don't jump off the page immediately, that are just bigger and stronger and will attack the vulnerability of Kel Brook. And there is a lot of vulnerability there. This is, again, this is a guy that's too coming off two back-to-back -back losses, two stoppages, two broken orbital bones. There's a lot of skeletons to get out of that closet right now. So for me, I can't think of an opponent off head, but for me, you match him as easy as humanly possible. And you openly admit it. There's nothing wrong with saying, look, we just need him to get his feet wet again. And this is the match. It's an eight rounder. So I hope, hopefully he's not headlining. Hopefully he's an undercard. Because if he's headlining, then us fans, uh, being the monsters and demons we are, we're going to want to see him in with a monster and a demon. And that's not fair to Kelbrook. But guys, what do you think of Kelbrook being back? Let me know your thoughts are. Peace.